Okay, so now uh, we're taking a look at Wildlands, which is coming from Osprey Games, designed by Martin Wallace, and I'm joined with the designer, Martin. So, hi. Hi, hello, hello there. Um, can you tell us about the game? Okay, um, so Wildlands is uh, designed to be a quick playing, simple, uh, multiplayer um, arena combat game. Okay? So, there are, uh, in the core game you have uh, four teams, so you have four groups of warriors. Each group is made up of five warriors. And each group has their own deck of cards. And it's those deck of cards that represent the abilities of that group. So, so what one team might be fast, another one might be good at melee combat, another one might be very good at ranged combat. So each of the teams has their own strengths and weaknesses. So uh, like I'm guessing this guy probably good at magicalness or uh, something? Stuff like that, yes. I'm trying to see where her character is on here. I think she on one of those, yeah. So there, there, is, there is a breakdown on here. I mean, you don't, you don't have over magic in this so much, but I'm guessing she's um, good at cat, you know, throwing magical bombs. Let's see what, what, what does she do. Um, but yeah, so. Okay. But the, the the twist is, and it's going to be difficult for you to see this on the podcast. But with the cards, rather than a card being used to activate a specific person. The cards allow you to activate a range of different people. So this card here could either allow you to activate the scimitar symbol person, or the star symbol person, or this person here. But obviously, if you if I use this card to do the top one, then that card is then used, which means the other two aren't doing anything. So when you're when you're planning what you're doing, you're looking at your cards, thinking, right, okay, which of my characters do I want to focus on at this point in time? Because if I do a lot with one particular character, then that means other characters will be doing less. Yeah. So there's an opportunity cost for doing everything. Um, and, so, and sorry, do you go through the whole deck when yes, you're the playing the cards? Cycle. So it's going to. So yeah, it will so cycle. It will cycle. Yeah. So basically, when it's your turn, you have a hand of seven cards. When it's your turn, you can do as many actions as you like. So you can move, you can fire, you can hit things, you can do whatever you want. But. The other players, every time you do an action, the other players have the opportunity to play a card with an interrupt symbol on it. Okay. So what it does, it keeps things fluid. So, you know, I, you know, I'm, I might think, yeah, I'm going to walk up to you and hit you with a big hammer. So I go, boom, boom, boom. And you might go, ah, now I'm going to interrupt you and now it becomes my turn. And now I'm going to get my, you know, I've got another guy over here who is really good at range fire and he's going to shoot you. Okay. So, so. But I, I imagine if you use your interrupts too much or too quickly, yes. you're then going to be at a disadvantage later in the game. You, you, you need to make sure you save them for the key moment. Because the other thing is, uh, sort of not explaining it uh, right at the beginning, is when you start the game, you've got your five characters, you get dealt ten map cards. So the map cards determine where you can start, so they're numbered. Yeah. You choose five map cards to go on your characters, and then the other five you hand to the player to your left, and that, that's the, where their objectives go. So you've got a degree of control over where you start, and you also have a degree of control over the objectives that the other player is trying to get to. But the thing is, you don't reveal your people immediately. So, uh, the, you know, you, 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 you always have to reveal one card each round. But, so what it means is, uh, with your interest, Somebody could be walking down a corridor thinking it's empty, and then you do an interrupt, you go, actually, I've got a guy in the same space as you. Oh, cool. And one of them. So you can set up uh, so, so there's hidden information there. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so even though the rules are relatively simple, in that the game is largely symbol driven, yeah. so the individual bits are quite easy to understand. You know, combat is basically. Unless you block it, I hit you. There's no dice. It's, there's just like, you know, I play a card that says I do a damage, you know. It could be, so like this one here. Well, this one here does two damage. So if I hit, I hit you, this, this is a heavy hit. If, if you've got a symbol that blocks, then you can play and block it. If you don't, boom, I hit you. And then do two damage, but damage cubes. Thing. So it moves very quickly. 
Uh, so we what, what's simple... the play time on this then? Uh, well, when I was doing the development work, we could we could do a two-player game in half an hour. Okay. Because it just moves really quickly. Um, I mean, it depends on the factions, because some factions are more defensive than others. But uh, again, a multiplayer game, you should be able to get the whole thing done in an hour. And when's this due to come out? Uh, this is going to be out in October. It's going to be available to the public at Essen. So I'm presuming it'll be in the shops for Christmas. But um, no, I, th- I think what people will get from this is this is a game. It's easy to set up. You know, you're not the decks are set for you, but you you kind of got to learn how to play the teams because they each have their own strengths and weaknesses. So, so with most kind of skirmishy games, you have an element of kind of building your squad. Is there an element of that no, all in this? Not not in this. I, I I didn't really want to do that. I just want to say, look, here's your squad, and you go learn how to play them. Because the thing is, um, I mean, when I was doing the original design, I designed 12 different uh, teams. So the idea that there, there are a number of expansions or a plan. So once you've got used to these four, well, there's more factions. Do, do you know if there's a schedule for those expansions uh, yet? There is, but you'd have to talk to these guys about it <laughs> because I've only just got here. And I, this is the first time I've actually seen this prototype. Yeah, which, so, which is really nice. The miniatures are the miniatures absolutely are really lovely. Good. The nice thing is you can have different boards, and the boards change the nature of the game. So this okay. one, because you're in a dungeon, this is a close combat game. So, the, the, the people so do you know how many boards are going to come with the base game? Uh, the, there's going to be two in the base set. So I think you've got the dungeon, and I think the other one is uh, kind of open terrain. Um, just the dungeon is the easiest one to play to begin with, because the open terrain, you have different height levels. <coughs> and the thing there, you have... Line, line of sight rules which basically you can see down but you can't see up okay so when you're playing in the open one being in a valley not good because anybody who's higher up than you they can shoot at you so you a nice bit of realism there yes it's basically the, the the real inspiration for this was squad leader okay because i wanted something that's a quick moving squad game uh, kind of tactical game where you have a simple opportunity fire rule which is basically the interrupt so I want to tell me it's like, okay, yeah, my, you know, I've got an objective that's down in the valley. I can't see anybody because yeah. they're not revealed. I want to get down to the valley and I want to get out again before somebody shoots me. Because and because you can, because you can play multiple actions, you go right. I'm going to move. I'm going to move again. Yeah. I've got to my objective. And the other guy goes, oh, actually, I'm going to interrupt you. And I'm up here. I've been stocking up on arrow cards. Bang, bang, bang. And if I don't have um, the blocker cards, boom, I'm dead. And how many kind of squads, how many different sets of cards are going to be in the base set? Uh, there's going to be four factions in the base set. So that's okay. a good degree. There's a, there's a reason why a game you can get just for those if you were playing two player. Yeah. Because um, you've got the things that modify it, you know, depending on which squads are playing against each other, that's going to vary the game. Depending on which map that you play on, that's going to vary it. So the, the, huh? it's a, basically it's infinitely expandable. I don't yeah. think you could run out of ideas of how to modify this. Yeah. So. I, I must admit, it sounds like a more grown-up version of my favourite game, which is Arcadia Quest. I don't know if right. you've played that. I've not actually played that, but I've heard of it. But, yeah, it's yeah. a similar sort of idea where of arena combat with yeah. teams, um, but it doesn't have the whole interrupt thing, right, and that's yeah. really exciting about this. It yes. really is new, different. As you say, it just gives the game a dynamic aspect. So I'm really excited about this. Um, do you have any idea how much it's going to cost? Because um, I'm cheap. Yeah, the, the thing is, is, they've not set a final price yet because it's part of discussions. So obviously, they want to keep Still sorting out like the production yeah. costs. Well, I think they know the production costs. It's a case of how much, at the end of the day, it's how much profit you want to make. And people have to make money. I mean, they're looking at price which will be somewhere around 50 to 60 pounds. Okay. But you're getting 20 miniatures. Yeah, no, that's, that seems reasonable. I mean, yeah. if you compare that to some of the other miniature games out there, which, you know, you're starting buy in on a lot of them these days is 100 pounds. Yeah. 50 to 60 pounds sounds really good. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to check. Philip, do you know when the expansions for this are going to be releasing? So, uh, this is coming out in October. So first expansion November. Okay. So is it schedule? Is it going to be one a month type thing? No, not, not at the moment. Two in the first half of next year. Okay. So two in the first half next year, and then wait and see. Okay. 
right, well, thank you for your time. No, that's okay. <laughs>